Welcome to Elementary Electroplating Experiments Part 2, the electricity supply. And the image on screen at the moment has nothing whatsoever to do with the topic covered in this video. Outside my kitchen window in the back garden, I've set up this bird feeding station. Maybe it's a little bit over the top. I used to get a lot of wild birds in my garden, I mean the feathered type. But now since I put this up, I don't get any. I'm told by some people on Facebook that they need to get used to it before they'll come and feed from it. Inside the workshop is this thing that I've just bought. It's like a bit of a mobile phone charger on steroids. It has a USB output. What it is, is a variable DC power supply. I've wanted one of these for many years. From quite an early age, I've always enjoyed messing around with things mechanical and things electrical. When I think back, I bought one of my wives an electric chair, but she wouldn't plug it in. These power supplies used to be extremely expensive, I mean really expensive when I was young. But they are no longer expensive things at all. This one was slightly more expensive than some of the others that I've seen, and I think it was £74, but at least it has a USB socket. This will be useful, because I always carry my mobile phone with me in the workshop in case I have an accident so I can call for help. So if the battery's a bit flat, I'll be able to put it on charge. At the same time, I also bought a few of these very cheap banana plug to crocodile clip leads. I decided to save the two good quality ones that came with the machine for other applications. But these cheap leads will be quite good for holding the anode and cathode in the tub full of electrolyte. Which is the same stuff out of my acid bath that I used in the first episode. And I'm going to use it in this episode, but I have bought some proper copper sulphate crystals and two litres of distilled water. I've used a much larger piece of pipe to make the anode. And in this episode, I'm going to explain about the electrical side of the operation. When the copper sulphate and the distilled water arrives, I will also explain the chemistry. For all the viewers who keep asking me questions about the chemistry, you will have to wait until the next episode. But if you can't wait to the next episode, and that will be after the weekend, why not just type the word electroplating in the search bar of YouTube? And by doing that, you will find thousands of examples, some good, some not so good. For the moment, think of it as witchcraft. Now I have a proper power supply that's variable and controllable. I can change the voltage and current. This power supply is a 10 amp, 30 volt power supply. If all you're wanting to do is plate pieces of metal, then you don't need anything quite as comprehensive as this one. For me, it's a very useful piece of test equipment when I'm messing around with things that are electrical. While I've been telling you all this, I've been changing the voltage on the power supply to see what happens. This solution from my acid bath is not a very good electrolyte for what I need it to do. I poured the acid back into my main acid bath in the outer part of the workshop, and now I've poured a quantity of clean tap water into the tub. But there was a trace of acid left in the tub as I put the water in, so this should be okay for trying to make my own electrolyte. This is just a quick experiment to see what happens. And now in this water, the anode and the cathode are both pieces of copper tubing. As I'm not electroplating at the moment, just trying to create some copper in suspension in an ionic sort of a way, and what I'm hoping to do is turn this water a nice blue colour. There's not much happening at the moment, a few bubbles around the anode, I know, I'll turn the power up. As this is tap water with just a dash of acid in it, I've set the power supply's voltage setting to maximum. And now I have an amp setting of 0.28. What I would like to illustrate is that the electrolyte is a variable resistor. And the amount of current measured in amperes is directly related to the proximity of the two electrodes in the bath of water. With this amount of voltage, you can clearly see that when I move the electrodes close together, the reaction becomes much more vigorous. One thing I have learnt, though, is you need to constantly stir the mixture. Look at the difference in the current flowing after I stirred it. This is a bit misleading. The current has only gone down because with the paintbrush, I move the electrodes further apart. I intend to make a very modest electroplating setup at the end of all this. And I think I will build something into the bath that is constantly gently stirring the mixture. 
Maybe a small electric motor and a model boat propeller would do the job. I may try this and see what happens. Here I've increased the acid content of the water. You have to be careful when you're using chemicals. Not just acids, all chemicals can be dangerous, particularly if you don't know what they are. This stuff I'm pouring into the tub has been in my acid bath for about five years. Originally it started off as a kettle descaler called Kilrock K, and I think that is formic acid with additives. Not ideal, and it's not very blue either. I'm really looking forward to the copper sulphate crystals arriving at the weekend. I have watched a few videos about electroplating on YouTube, some good, some not so good, and a few of them recommend a substance called Root Kill. This must be a product that's available in America because I can't find it in the UK. The only stuff I can find is Root Killer, stuff to kill roots in plants, but it's also shown to be a weed killer, so I'm not sure that it's pure copper sulphate. The stuff I've ordered is 100% pure. You really have to be careful when you're playing with things when you don't know what they are. That's about it for this video, I just wanted to show you the power supply. I've seen people electroplating using two 1.5 volt dry batteries, and I've seen electroplating using a 12 volt car battery, but I think I'm better off with this, I can control the voltage. And that's it for this short video, I'd just like to say as I always do, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.